Hey guys, Ranger Nick, Team Plastic Addicts, This Crap Underground, PDGA 49584. This is going to be my 2020 season in the bag uh, for the start of the season. Uh, we're going into, geez, it'll be April in a couple days here, and I actually haven't played a sanctioned event yet this year. Uh, between weather, new job, um, pandemics, it's just been kind of rough. So anyway, um, starting out, just kind of show you what I do have in my bag, what I've been playing with and uh, some discs I just added recently. Uh, here it is, 2020 in the bag, Ranger Nick. Here we go. Starting off, here's my bag. It is a Valjekin Signature BX Series Grip. Um, it's a great bag. Uh, I've been carrying grip bags for quite a while now. Um, even the carts that I've, this, what few carts I've used, they've been uh, carts that you carry a bag on if I've ever used a true cart. So. That's the bag, it's a great bag, plenty of room. These uh, pockets here expand out. Even in the winter time, I can fit everything I need. Gear, extra towels, you name it. Um, Scorecards, we'll start with the small pockets here. Um, got my rules disc off. Got my little scorecard holder and my reusable scorecard that I carry around. I still like to keep, keep score on a uh, on a card here. I don't really use the app as much as I probably should, but a buddy of mine made this for me. Uh, Russell Parker, loans from Charlie's uh, uh, Leatherworks, so check them out. Got my junior disc. I use my junior disc as a marker instead of the small ones. I kept losing the little ones, so I just started switching over to these big ones. Fits in the bag just fine, so. Got pencil holders up here. Got pencil holders in a few other spots. Bunch of tags whatnot, towel, random gear, same thing on the other side, and here goes my discs, starting off with my putters, putting putters, jawbreaker focus, uh, I only carry two just to have one as a backup, and I'll start out the round warming up, so um, I only, both these putters about the same amount of wear, so. I use them pretty equally, but there's the jawbreaker focus, my putting putter. Carry two throwing putters, three actually. First throwing putter I throw, it's gonna be my slowest one. Uh, this is the Plastic Addicts Top Line Habit. It is a three five negative one zero. So it is a slow, understable uh, dinner plate of a disc. This thing's huge. Um, just for comparison, there it is with the uh, the focus. It is considerably larger than the focus. So I use this for I use this for straight shots. I use it for up shots. Use it for turnovers off the tee box that are you know 200 range. Um, I can throw right at the basket. I've had a handful of throw-ins with this disc. It's very accurate. Uh, it will go straight. It'll have a very, very predictable turn. Next throwing putter, Z Challenger. This is my off the tee box distance throwing putter. Uh, it's fairly neutral for me. Um, the Z plastic helps it handle the torque. It doesn't beat in very quickly, and uh, it'll go straight for a very, very long way. I can. It'll hold an ante if I put it on an ante. It'll hold a hyzer if I put it on a hyzer. It's just a great point and shoot throwing putter. Uh, it's got a slight micro bead. I don't really like beaded, uh, beaded plastic for throwing. So that micro bead gives it just enough stability, but it doesn't throw mess up with my uh, throw. So Z Chow. And then the one underground stamp disc I carry around still. This is my pearly Z zone. I use this mostly just for approach shots. I rarely throw this off the tee. Um, I used to forehand a lot more until I hurt my shoulder. And since I don't really forehand as much, really this is an approach disc. It's a hyzer approach disc for me, uh, forehand or backhand, but not with a lot of power. And I'll also use it for uh, forehand rollers to get out of jail. Moving on, understable mid-range, um, Meteor. So since I picked up the uh, Habit, I don't throw the Meteor as much. Uh, this right here is basically a higher speed habit for me. So very similar lines, very similar shots. Uh, this one just goes a little bit further and I can throw a little bit harder. So, uh, 
if you're looking for a very understable mid-range, Meteor's a great understable or finesse mid-range. Only other mid-ranges I carry are the Buzz, the Buzz, and the Buzz. So I carry the Buzz SS in a titanium plastic for my straight to slightly understable uh, shots. I carry the Z Buzz for my straight to slightly overstable mid-range shots, uh, three, 350-ish. And then my Buzz OS, this is in a crystal plastic and this Jaybird Crystal, I haven't found any that are this overstable. This is the most overstable Buzz OS I have been able to find yet, and that's just me. Um, I really like this disc. Uh, forehand, backhand, uh, roller with it sometimes, forehand roller. But um, this is mostly now a headwind mid-range disc for me, since I don't forearm as much as I used to. Moving into the drivers. Alright, so fairway driver, zombie. Um, so y'all probably heard me say it before, I'll say it again. All the zombie is, is a long distance, oh, drop some disc, is a long distance buzz, that's it. The zombie is just like a buzz, but it goes a little bit further, and it's just slightly more overstable, that's it. It's got a little bit of a nose there, it's almost like a hybrid between a driver and a mid-range. Love the zombie, it's very underrated. Uh, I know a lot of people are digging on the Stalker because of Paige Pierce now. That's great. I used to throw a Stalker. I switched from the Stalker to the Zombie because for me it's a little more reliable. That's me. All right. Got the ones I dropped. Moving up from the Zombie. Fairway driver again. Heat. So this is my flippy fairway driver. 9-6-3-1. Um, heat for me is a roller disc, a Heiser flip disc, a big Annie disc, and um, really I can throw a huge Heiser with this with a tailwind if I put a lot of Heiser on it, and it'll just glide for days all the way to the basket. So, love the heat. Next up from the heat for me, I kind of skip, um, I have a different, slightly different order of things. So next up for me is the Thrasher. Now it's actually a distance driver, but it kind of fits in with my fairway driver slots, if that makes sense, because it's the next one is stability. So my Thrasher, Thrasher is a 12.5, negative 3.2. Um, this is going to be a straight to slightly over, understable, but not as understable as the Heat. So just one step up, that little bit faster keeps it more stable for me, because I throw them about the same speed. But um, I throw the Thrasher for a straight to slightly understable drive. Next up from there is the Undertaker. Uh, this is also a fairway driver. It's a true fairway. 9.5, negative 1.2. This is going to be straight to slightly overstable. So, I was talking about the buzz earlier. And the next step up is the zombie. The next step up from that for me is the Undertaker. It goes just a little further than the zombie. And it's a great driver. This was just pretty. I like that. That foil is great. Moving up. So I'm still not 100% where this is going to fit. But so far, the next step up from the Undertaker for me is the Hades. So the Hades is going to be a little more on the understable side. Uh, straight to understable. But it's fast enough that it will hold that. Uh, I'm thinking that this Hades is probably going to be a speed 12. I It may be out already. I'm not sure. But if I had to guess, this is probably a speed speed 12 disc. Uh, yeah, probably speed 12. That's what I'm going to go with. And uh, I'm going to say like a 12, 6, negative 1, 2, or something like that. Um, I'm going to look that up after I film this. But I like the Hades. The CSP plastic is great. It goes straight. It's a good complement to the Zeus. So it's uh, not quite as overstable as the Zeus. Ah, also, in my opinion, it is not quite as overstable as the Vulture. So the Vulture was supposed to be a step up from the Undertaker, but for me, they're not that similar. The Hades kind of fits between the two. So the Vulture is going to be a uh, 
overstable fairway driver. Um, I just love that stamp. That's the uh, graffiti, I guess, camo foil on the uh, ESP plastic. But uh, Vulture, I don't throw as much. I'll throw if I got a little bit more of a headwind. I'll switch to the Vulture from the Undertaker. But it's a great desk. Then moving on up to distance. So these two right here, the uh, this is my TI Flex Nuke, and this is my uh, ES. I'm actually not 100 percent So this is the first run. This is my first run uh, Zeus. So the Zeus is just a little bit flatter, a little bit more neutral than my Nuke. My Nuke's just slightly more overstable. And this is a TI Flex Nuke. It's pretty beat in. When they're new, they're a little more beefy. Um, the Nuke can handle just a little bit more torque. The Zeus is going to be a little more gliding. It's going to go a little further. So I use these discs back and forth depending on the wind. But they're very similar discs. And I like them both. I've noticed that my, uh, my bag kind of goes from slow to fast and from understable to overstable. So... Next up on the lineup is going to be the Plastic Addicts Intervention in Top Line Plastic. This is the uh, this is the first run. It's got a little sparkle in it, and I think that uh, let's see all those stars. I think that's the Party Time foil. I can't remember exactly. I think that's what they call it though. But so uh, this is a twelve five negative one four. Uh, people have compared it to a uh, kind of a overstable destroyer, and uh, that. It, that's fairly accurate. It's uh, just a little bit more overstable than the Zeus, and um, it'll go. It doesn't go quite as far, but it's a great disc. Um, if you throw it on a spy kaiser, it's going to stay on the spy kaiser. It's not forgiving. It's not going to flip up on you like uh, the Zeus would. Um, that's a great disc for headwinds, and if you really uh, force a uh, turnover on it, you can get it to uh, to do a full flex. Just a little bit fat, uh, just moving on up from there is the test flight machete. Uh, I like the, mach the machete is a 2.2. Um, it's very overstable. These test flights are not quite as overstable. I like the plastic. It's like a gummy Z plastic. That's why I like these test flights and I've had this one for a very long time. Um, but the machete used to be more of a forearm disc for me, kind of a uh, uh, shot shaping forearm disc. Uh, I don't use it for that as much anymore. Uh, I'll use it for a big shot because I can actually get this one to turn a little bit, believe it or not, now. So it's just a great long distance uh, headwind fighting disc. Next up from there, Glow Z Force. Um, quadruple team stamp on this one. This is a lot of fun. So the Glow Z Force is not quite as beefy as, say, like an Austin Turner Force. That's what I like about it. I don't have a huge arm. Uh, I don't have to work very hard to get this one to go straight for a little while before it cuts. I can throw big sweeping hyzers with this one very close to the ground. It's great for skip shots. And then next up in beef is going to be my Raptor. This is a Z Raptor. I believe this was first run plastic Z Raptor. Um, mostly what I use these for is some spikes, some real fast skips, and uh, for forehand rollers to get through trees and things like that. This is a great forehand roller disc. If you've never used a Z Raptor for forehand rollers, you're missing out. And then getting up to the very tip top of my beef, Z Lite Nuke OS. Uh, these are kind of hard to get a hold of, uh, but this Nuke OS is in, this is a 161 nuke os uh, all this over stability of a typical nuke os but it doesn't take a whole lot of umph to get this thing going i can actually get a little distance out of this one and know it's going to dump as soon as it gets where it's going that's a great precision driver and i think that is everything that's all my discs uh, a couple other things i carry one of these uh ground bounds um, knee pads. These are great for tight shots. Uh, it's amazing how much a difference having just a little bit of cushion makes if you're uh, 
uh, back in the woods, especially if you're wearing shorts and got to kneel down on something to take a putt or an approach shot, that little bit of extra comfort does make a huge difference. You don't have to get your towel all dirty or muddy. Carry a couple tags for different courses. This is from the Flying Armadillo 2018. I never actually played a tag race, but I saw they had number, uh, number 100 sitting on the red shirt, so I bought it from them just to go support their cause. Flying Armadillo, San Marcos, Texas. Check it out. It's a fun place. Uh, some more leather. From Longview, uh, buddy, buddy Russell, Lonesome Charlies, made all these leather tags. Longview Disc Golf Association when I was there. And then these little pulls right here are made by Lark, Lark Paracord. Uh, I got to check out John Lark, Lark Paracord. Uh, he makes some cool stuff. Um, Lonesome Charlies and Lark didn't, you know, grip. They didn't give me any kind of incentives to show off their stuff, but I believe in it. They make good stuff, so. And I think that's about it. So that's my in the bag for 2020. Ranger Nick, Discraft Underground, Team Plastic Addicts. That's all I got.